So welcome everyone. <clears throat> My name is Katarina Lundgren and I am the director of MIMA Center and I also have my own business called Live the Change. And today, uh, me and Marta, and also later Hi. Nicole will join us. <laughs> um, we'll give you uh, an introduction to trauma sensitive equine assisted mindfulness. Uh, what that is, how we work with it, and how equine welfare fits into this. So I will start by sharing um, a short presentation. And then Marta will also share some pictures with you. And then there is time for questions. Can everybody see my screen? Or somebody? Thumbs up. Great, thank you. This presentation takes about 10 to 15 minutes or longer, uh, depending on if you want to, to have questions while I show it or if you wait until afterwards. So what is trauma sensitive equine assisted mindfulness? It's a combination of mindfulness, of course, uh, and of experiential learning with horses. And both these modalities are really, really powerful. Uh, they can reach far within people and which is a good thing, uh, but also needs to be handled with care. So from my perspective, you, you need to know what you're doing when you offer this. So our way of doing equine assisted mindfulness is out in nature. So we do it nature assisted. And we do that for many reasons. Um, there are of course many benefits for people to be out in nature. Uh, but it's also one way for us to make sure that the horses have good welfare. So either we work, as you see, this is a lady uh, doing mindful walking with a horse. Uh, so she actually has a lead rope on a halter. And we don't use that very much. Often we work with horses just loose out in the pastures. And I also want to point out, Marta will talk more about equine welfare later, but Having really high equine welfare is super important, not only for the horses, but also for um, the outcome of the interventions. So why then trauma sensitive? And trauma sensitive means that we're not focusing on resolving trauma, it's not trauma focused, but it means that we who deliver this are trained in being trauma sensitive. We can recognize signs of trauma, we know about trauma, we can adapt our activities and our interventions to trauma and in this way support people with trauma. It makes these kinds of interventions also accessible for people with trauma. Mindfulness can be really, really hard for people with trauma otherwise, and, but so can also equine assisted interventions. So I would say make all your interventions, uh, everything you offer trauma sensitive because those who has not got trauma, um, for them, it doesn't matter. But for them, the, the ones who have, that would make a really huge difference. So this means that somebody with an official diagnosis with PTSD, for example, uh, can take part, but there is also, of course, other uh, dissociation and other trauma related conditions or diagnosis if we are going, going to talk about or mention that. So you can use it as an intervention for someone with trauma, you can also help with people with grounding and stabilization strategies. Uh, and we're gonna go more into what the different steps are in this program. And one of them is self-compassion. We know that people show up and they might know about that they have trauma, sometimes they don't. Uh, we also know that people can come and say, I have, for example, been through a car accident. But when one had one traumatic event happen, it can often uh, wake up other older traumas so they resurface. So even if they are aware of one more recent trauma, uh, there might be others popping up. This is not uncommon at all. So how can you be trauma sensitive? And this is, of, of course, does not always only apply to working with horses, it's always, but try to always give options. Uh, 
let everyone set their own pace. Uh, let people do things in their own ways as much as possible. Give plenty of space. Uh, always have consent for everything you do that has to do with touch. Um, and if you work with uh, helping people pay attention to things like uh, smell and, and sounds and, and vision and stuff like that, or what they can see, focus on things in the external world, not internal. Um, hold back uh, breathing exercises, for example, and body scans that makes people end up in their bodies. Um, these are really good things you can do later when you know where people are and how they handle their traumas. Um, but don't start with it. And for yourself, be as present and as grounded as you can be. Uh, be accepting, uh, non-judgmental, and try to stay open. And be authentic, transparent with what you do, clear and honest, and do not pathologize. With pathologize, I mean actually bringing up these kind of categorizations like we talk about people having a uh, PTSD, uh, post-traumatic stress disorder, or, or other kinds of disorders, or mentally sick, or whatever. Uh, trauma is trauma, and that's actually not a, some kind of illness in itself. So what is mindfulness? And there are many different uh, definitions, but I have used John kabat here, and he is a well-known person in the mindfulness world. So he says, uh, it is the awareness that arises from paying attention on purpose in the present moment and non-judgmentally. So it means that we practice to become more aware, uh, which is problematic when you are traumatized or even just maybe just stressed actually. So when we are stressed or traumatized, there are defense mechanisms kicking in and helps us to not be so present, not be so aware of what goes on internally for us. And one way that that can happen is through dissociation, which is a kind of a disconnection from yourself or from others, from your environment, from your experiences, from reality, from time and so on. And dissociation is something we all do. We all dissociate. We, die, we daydream, we, we, we fantasize, we zone out a little bit when we are bored. So this is a normal mechanism, but it's used, you can say it's used too much when you try to protect yourself from trauma, but also sometimes, as I said, from just stress. So the, it, it's kind of the opposite to being mindful. So to be more mindful and to not like just fade out of our own lives, um, we can practice this. So we practice being more mindful. We practice being more present in our own lives. And when I have met um, mindfulness with horses in other settings and, and other offers from uh, other organizations, it is often this uh, come and hang with the horse out in the pasture. And that can be a very nice experience and it can be mindfulness. Uh, but I kind of want to point out that mindfulness is a dual and what we work with in TSEAM is often the other part of mindfulness. So not the, just the being with, but the working with. And the working with is expanding your, your tolerance for stress and for, for being with your past and your trauma. So I don't know if you heard about the, the window of tolerance, but this is a way of expanding your window of tolerance. Uh, so you actually can be more present and uh, be more mindful. And of course, nobody's mindful all the time. And could be too much for mindfulness also, uh, but keeping a balance is what we strive for. So uh, the mindfulness have this duality of being with and working with, and that is the same for experiential learning. So experiential learning is often translated as uh, learning by doing, but it's also this uh, part that you have uh, the reflecting of what, on what you have been doing. So without the reflecting, it's actually not really experiential learning. So we have in experiential learning, we invite people to do something. And, and when we do it with horses, we often invite to do something 
in the presence of horses. And as I said before, we often do it out in nature. So you have the doing, you explore something or you practice something. And then you have the creating the awareness of, you, of what you were doing and also the reflecting on what you were doing. So this becomes kind of a cycle like do, be, do, be, do, be, doing. And this is also, you can call it the practice of action with reflection is praxis. And one of the things we work with is movement and rhythm. And I am a cognitive science master student and I'm really, really like cognitive science. Um, so I want to point out that the way we learn from when we are really small is often by doing and by moving and which is actually forming our way of thinking later. So when we work with movement and rhythm now, today, when we are adults, we can go in and relearn things or just learn them if we didn't learn them as kids growing up. So by movement and by having rhythm involved in this, you can um, work with and relearn and process things. And there are many aspects to movement and rhythm. Um, one, of, one of the ways it's used in trauma work is, for example, with the EMDR. I also want to say that because there is many, uh, many trainees talking about how good rhythm, horse rhythm is for people, uh, and it's taken us something that is for granted that it's always good, like it's always good for people to meet the horse and it's always good with the rhythm for people. And I just want to put in here that um, you need to be careful because there are people who, who react very aversive to the rhythm of a horse. <clears throat> and also if you have trauma, that rhythm can trigger and remind you of many different things. And even like social interaction is a rhythm between people, like it's this uh, turn taking, I do now something, the other do something, I do something, the other do something. And that can be between a horse and a human as well. But this way of being almost like forced into a rhythm can also be very problematic for horses. So rhythm movement is very good to work with, but you also need to do what need to know what you're doing and you need to look out for how the person you work with respond to it. Mindfulness, um, most trainings in mindfulness, you are basically just invited to be mindful with, um, I have a dog is barking, so I'm becoming, losing my, my focus a little bit. Um, when you go to mindfulness training, you're often invited to become more present with yourself immediately. And this is done by, for example, a body scan or, or a breathing exercise. Or I don't know if you've been to one, but you often are offered the, the racing experience, like you chew a little racing and you talk about the texture and the, the, the smell and the taste and all this. Um, and mindfulness can be very, very hard if you have trauma or if you're just high in stress. So what we have been doing is divide it into steps. So you don't go, you can see here because presence is much further down, it's number eight here. Um, we go through all these other steps be first before we come to actually focusing on, on the present itself. So we start with an introduction and a contextualization. What is mindfulness? How do we work? How does it fit into other things? Why do we work with horses and so forth? And then we move to something we call mindful gauges, which is about learning to listen to yourself like finding your inner compass and then we practice how you keep yourself safe and we talk about resilience what that is and we practice that what is it it's uh, how do you bounce back when you are feeling caught in your past or feeling high in stress we practice inner awareness and of course of compassion uh, belonging and then we come to presence and then after that, we also go through something we call mindful attunement and attachment. And the last step is to integrate all of this. And the first steps in this, uh, I would say from number two to number eight, is something that I first learned and met through David Trilevan's work with trauma-sensitive mindfulness. 
and I highly recommend him. He is um, one of the leading people in the field of working trauma sensitive with mindfulness. So what we have done is we have used his program and we have added the experiential learning with horses and the nature assisted part. Um, and I don't know if you can see the picture, I can't because I have you in front of it, but it's uh, from one of our trainings and it's um, a participant working on actually in an in experiential way, building her own window of tolerance. And then when we do equine assisted interventions, we kind of always need to ask ourselves, why, why do we have horses present? Why do we work with horses? So we have made a decision. I want horses incorporated because this and that. And from my perspective, having them present is about the relational aspect. And by that, I don't only mean like the relation with the horse, because the horse can stand for different things. It can also be the relation to self, body, mind, soul, time, environment. Um, whatever kind of a relationship you actually need to work on. Uh, but also having them present helps with this being in the here and now, being in this moment. Um, there are people arguing that horses always are in the here and now, and I would, I would not agree on that, but I think they are so much better on that than we are. So trying to put together a little bit of why why we're working with trauma sensitive equine assisted mindfulness and what it can help with. So from my perspective, it's giving people a, a chance to find uh, tailor-made individually, individually, individually <laughs> adapted uh, mindfulness tools. So when you often when you go to a mindfulness group or training, you do the same things as everybody else in the group. Um, and here is more about finding your own ways and the tools that fits you. And that would be different for different people, of course. I'm training a lot on what you need in, in any situation. What would be helpful for you right now? Uh, and having like a, a toolbox that you can pick from. So you can support yourself handling feelings of powerlessness and overwhelm, for example, and help you develop resilience, uh, self-compassion, a better sense of safety and belonging. But also this relate better and to yourself, of course, but also to others or to nature or any environment. And to know ourselves better, both our potentials and our limitations, our strengths and weaknesses. And we offer uh, workshops. These are the ones that we have scheduled so far in, in 2022. So we have one in Poland. Uh, Marta can tell a little bit more about that. And we have one in Italy in June. Uh, one in Scotland and one in UK in September. And then we have two in Sweden, one in April and one in June. Uh, and those are, uh, we offer them together with, they are part of a pre-pilot study we are doing. So they're actually for free. Um, then you have to <laughs> give us some information in exchange. So you would have to answer questionnaires and, and we have to be interviewed by us. So we are developing, we're doing our own research on this way of working with horses. And you can contact me or anyone else in, in MIMR and ask about these workshops. And you can also find more information on our webpage if you're interested. And these are just my contact information. And I think I have shared this. Uh, I'm going to stop sharing this now. I've shared this presentation in the Trauma Sensitive Equine Assisted Mindfulness group on Facebook before, and I can just repeat the sharing if you want to see it uh, again. So that was what I had to share with you today. Uh, and I'm sorry about the barking dog that made me lose my focus a bit, but uh, good to have my grounding tools in my hand when I'm talking, finding my way back again. Um, I don't know, Marta, if you want to, to show your pictures and talk a little bit about the equine welfare in this now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, just one moment. Mm -hmm. Wait, family, I think. I, I, I think I could now show the pictures of the place where the workshop in Poland will take place. And uh, 
I, I guess that some of the pictures that are in your presentations, they actually speak something, say something about the environment mm -hmm. and how we, um, what kind of environment we invite to and what's the environment we offer to the horses we work with. But they are taken from different places, I guess. And uh, maybe seeing the pictures I collected from last few weeks will give you an idea of um, where you are, well, you might find yourself doing mindfulness with horses. Because like last time during the webinar, we had questions about uh, the environment in which uh, we work. And we realized that many people connect being with horses with this kind of typically equestrian environment with stables, paddocks, um, I know, around pens maybe, um, and so on. And uh, that we might be really, you know, we might be talking about horses and might, we might be seeing different things actually in our heads. So I will just give you like really five or six um, um, photos from my place uh, to which I invite you uh, to try um, equinus and mindfulness. And then we will let you speak and uh, we will be open for questions. Yeah. Um, okay. Can you see something? <laughs> yeah, okay, great. Um, so uh, this is actually last week. <laughs> it's April in Poland. <laughs> it was unexpected snowfall. And uh, so these are my horses. I have, I'm living actually. I don't know who has who, but it's hard for me to say my horses. I mean, we, I live with eight horses. And this is, um, they have a very, um, let's say a variety of different surroundings for them, like open space like this with some small trees and some bushes um, and with uh, and constant access to hay in hay nets or loose hay but in different arrangements, depending on my on my creativity levels and also my as if my energy levels depends what I'm able to offer to them. Uh, they have also some kind of shelter. It used to be a stable, but now the walls from most of the boxes are removed and the boxes are opened all the time and they can uh, come and go uh, whenever they want to. It's actually yesterday, this photo taken yesterday and I, I as you can see I have some kind of uh, weakness for portraying horses laying down I don't know <laughs> if you feel a kind of I, 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 I feel connected to some kind of vulnerability in me whenever I see horses doing this around me so that's why I'm sharing um, yeah so they, there is also a, a small let's say a forest I I, I call I think we lost Marta there a little bit. Her internet can be a bit <clears throat> unstable, so she will <clears throat> come back soon again. Uh, so this is what, what we thought was important to show, that we work with horses in, in a totally different environment than most people work. So we actually think that this is a very important part of it, both for the horses, but also for people. So in general, we do not offer equine-assisted mindfulness in stables or riding arenas or around pens or such places. Uh, <clears throat> there you are, Martin. Okay, something, yes, I'm it back. a little bit. So I just talked okay. a little bit about that we're showing these pictures because uh, we think it's important to, to point out that we, we work in another kind of environment than yeah. in stables and riding arenas and so forth. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But just to give you just to, to just to give you a, like a feeling how it might how it might look like and uh, how it is actually. Yeah. yeah. 
so thank you for it was a, yeah, thank you for dropping by for a moment to my place and and uh, yeah questions time yeah Anyone having questions or thoughts, reflections? Or it was crystal clear? Or crystal boring. And <laughs> was it kind of what you expected it to be? So I will jump in if I can. Yes, please. Of course you can. <laughs> Hi, my name is Venya. I'm from Slovakia, actually. Okay. And uh, I didn't have time yet to read all about the action you are doing, the workshop. But is it suitable for people who would you like to do something like this in the future with their own horses? Or is it more for general public who wants to work on mindfulness and experience something for themselves i mean if i can go from there also to direction of working with people or is just for my own personal development it is for it your makes own. sense yes it does <laughs> and, and we we often get that question but it is for your own sake but if you want to work with it it's it's I think it's super important that you have the experience yourself first before you, mm -hmm. you, you teach it to other people or facilitate it to other people. So I would say it's a first step in whatever. You can just mm -hmm. come to explore it and, and for yourself, or you can come with the intention to, to then use it. And if you're used to working with equine assisted event interventions, you will pick parts and stuff that you might want to integrate pretty soon. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you will also mention things what to take care of if we are with other people and similar stuff or um, not really that direction it, it will be more it depends, about? depends on the group actually because they're all, uh, all adapted to the people coming to this specific mm -hmm. training um, mm -hmm. and that's always different. So. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I also think that when, once you are there and it's like two days so I guess there is this time for asking questions and for coming up to us and, you know, just finding out things. And it doesn't have to be in the, you know, whole group, but you can just, you know, feed your yes. curiosity. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. It was uh, very full of information and I liked it a lot. So thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. And it, I know it's a lot. Uh, trying to squeeze in both theory and pictures and steps and all of this in, in 10 minute presentation. But it's to give you kind of a, a, a taster uh, of what we do. Uh, yeah, yeah, we're, 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 oh, sorry. Yeah. Sorry, it, it just made very nice sense. And it really, for me, it painted a clear picture. So I really would like to go, for example, after seeing this. So I hope that will be a good feedback for you. But it, it made me really interested because I like the story and I like the points and the structure. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, I wanted to ask, if I may, when you were in Slovakia, are you located? Is it far from Poland or? Well, not so far, maybe two hours from the borders. Okay. Middle Slovakia. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. anyone else who would like to say something? I can share that. Um, I usually do that and I'm very open with my own background and, and why I work with this. Uh, so I have a lot of trauma myself in, in the background. So I have actually uh, kind of found out because I needed to. And uh, when I went to mindfulness, uh, different trainings. I am a uh, certified, uh, certified mindfulness instructor, but there were nobody talking about trauma sensitive uh, and, and taking, in, in, taking trauma uh, into consideration when training people to become instructors. And many people go to different kinds of, of mindfulness uh, experiences or even, even trainings and they, they can't really use it or even it can, they can make them react aversive to it which is kind of a failure because 
if you even can't just sit still and be with yourself, like <laughs> uh, that, that can be super stressful for people. And also I have been to other kinds of trainings and then we talk about that all people with trauma need the same things. Like I went to uh, yoga, mindful trauma sensitive yoga session and the person there talked all the time. She was talking incessantly all the time, like that, 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 and and she explained that she was doing that because that was being trauma sensitive. Because she has got to training, and they taught her that she needed to talk all the time, because then she didn't leave people alone. And I was like, that doesn't work for me. Like, people are different, and that's why it's so important to individualize things and making people find what works for them. Which is why also Marta and Sadio Venia that. Also in our trainings, we do that. You come with your, your wishes, your, your, what you want to get out of it. And we, we try to adapt that to everyone. So that the individuality is uh, making it individual is very important for us. And there are some people who have joined us uh... I think by the by the time the presentation was over, and um, yeah. I wonder if they if those people who are kind of joining later, if you want to ask something and kind of benefit from the fact that you came, and uh, it seems it's not like question session questions, and maybe you're not getting much information. Uh, no, and, and as you said, we will post the recording in the group and, and yeah, the okay. presentation as well. So if you missed it, you can find it there. Um, but I was thinking maybe somebody came with question already and yeah. wants to ask it. To, um, anyway. And I would love if you turn your cameras on so we can see you because we are just talking to mostly black squares. Which is not really trauma sensitive at all. <laughs> <laughs> no, I can see, I can see Marit, I can see Benya, Evelyn, yeah. Ola, Karin. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Any more questions, reflections? Do you work with mindfulness already? Do you work with equine assisted interventions? I think was nodding, but <laughs> I know there is a couple of people here working with the pharmacies and interventions. Yeah, it's okay. You can be shy too. Is there anything more Marta we can share about it? Hi, can I uh, ask a question? Yes. yes. Okay. Hi, I'm Alexandra and uh, I'm really interested uh, in it. I work myself in um, mindfulness and the yoga field, mm -hmm. but uh, this what you're doing is uh, I really would love to do just for myself. Mm -hmm. And um, I think it's kind of a childhood dream when I really wanted to have some more connection with horses. I never got it. And now I'm thinking like when I learn about your method, I think it's like, it was not so much about riding, but really to to connect with the with the horses and animals, yeah? Yes, it is. It, it's, so, we, we seldom work with, with riding. You can do it, of course, but mm, basically we work always on the ground. Yeah, and then, and I love it. I really love it, uh, this method. And uh, I'm I'm living in Norway, but I was thinking, do you know any places in in Norway, or do you plan any maybe workshops here? Actually, we have a colleague in Mimer who does offer mindfulness with horses outside Oslo. Okay. Yeah, then maybe I can just uh, email you for some details. Yeah, if you go yeah. to our homepage, you can look up Francesca Gatti. Uh, um, okay. She is from Italy, but she lives in, in, in Oslo. Um, okay, perfect. Because I'm lo I'm living in Oslo as well, so I'm okay. looking for something which is not far. Yeah. So that would be great. 
and we are happy to come and set up a training if there are more people interested. Um, I know there are two people from Norway coming to our Italian workshop. Hmm. And I also wanted to ask, as I understood this uh, this workshop in, in Sweden, mm -hmm. is it in June, the one which is like um, the one you offer gratis just for exchange of, yeah? Yeah, one in April, one in April, uh, 20 to 22 April, mm -hmm. and one in June 10 to 12. And they are part okay. of this, this uh, pre-pilot study that we are doing. Okay. Um, so it's... Uh, all the workshops that we have now, they start Friday evening for an introduction for two hours, and then it's Saturday, whole day, and Sunday until three o'clock. Mm, yeah, then yeah. maybe I might join in uh, June. <laughs> yeah, you can you can email me if you are interested in that. Uh, okay, super. Yeah. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, we got some messages on chat from Gillian yeah. uh, from Canada. She says it was interesting. She has no camera because she's not in private space. She's done some EAL herself and was curious and she thanks us. And we have a message from Kelly, the barefoot trimmer, and she's interested to further support people, but also herself. And she thanks also and says it was interesting. Yeah, thank you. And me, me asking you to put on the camera is, is just for me, actually. I understand that people make their own choices. Sometimes you don't have a camera and sometimes you can't put it on. Um, and you may just say no. <laughs> yeah, you can always make your own choices. I'm really looking forward to, to this event, uh, which will be in Poland. Uh, I think it's the first of the kind uh here and uh what i i would love many people to just even hear about it because when i try to explain in my language equine assisted even the concept of being equine assisted it's not really it's not really easy polish is not as as if i know plus i don't know plastic i don't know how to say it but it's not that creative as English and very many people think it's all about writing or it's about hypotherapy or some other things <laughs> anyway it's not that easy to explain and when I add mindfulness to this and trauma it just uh, it's simple yeah it sounds really exotic um, so I hope this event will open some maybe windows minds and doors and, 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 and i don't know how much you know about experiential work either that we learn by doing so we can of course learn by reading or thinking or reflecting but the doing part is a way to connect your body with your mind so when you uh, try to solve a problem by doing it for example moving around cones in a field um you get the experience as well so you do that and then you get the relational aspect being with the horse and you get the movement and you are out in nature and then we support you in reflecting over what you have been doing so this is kind of how how we do it and then we keep ourselves to these different steps so some of the um they call it activities we invite you to do uh, is then around resilience or belonging, for example. Any other thoughts or? The study we are doing is we started out with um, looking at if we could adapt uh, trauma sensitive cognitive mindfulness to, to supporting cancer patients. That was not very easy to do in COVID times. It's hard for, for travel and COVID and cancer is not really a good match. Um, so we did actually a couple of, of um, trial sessions in Norway but we have some money left in that study. 
So that's why we set up two workshops in Sweden now. Uh, so that's why they are free. They are already funded by um, Fern Goodall Memorial Foundation in Norway. And whatever we come up with after that one, we hope we can apply for more money and learn even more about uh, the different parts in, in this. And we will present it, writing an article and going to conferences and such, such things. There is, did you see the question, Marta in the chat? Yeah, there is a question from Evelyn. Huh? Uh, she said, hi, I signed up for your equine assisted course for working with this in Sweden last year. Huh? Can you integrate this? But it says Alexandra, and I'm, but it's sent from Evelyn. Okay, I understand there is some, <laughs> the account belongs to Evelyn, but as is Alexandra who's writing, yeah. So can you see it? Yeah, I can see it, but I don't understand who, who is, the one who asked the question, can you can you ask it? I think she. Hi. 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 Um, my name is Alexandra, and I've been in contact with you um, before, Katarina, yeah. about studying for the. I can't remember the name right now, but I've been signed up and paid for the course in Sweden, and then I couldn't come. Oh. Oh. And. I, yeah, I was supposed to do the online training later. Yes. It was uh, equine therapy and learning programs. Yes, yes, yes exactly. Yeah. Um, and and your your question is how? What do you mean by integrating? Mm, um, I mean, how much um, how much does this differ from each other, or is it? Um, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, no, I understand. Uh, um, I would say that what we do in, in the trainings of equine assisted uh, equine therapy and learning programs is the base. So in level one, we go through the fundamentals of everything you basically need to know about the horse, the horse's welfare, horse behavior, equine cognition, but also how to work in a team and what everything you need to know to, to start thinking about setting up a business like that. Yeah. This workshop that we do in trauma sensitivity when it's in mindfulness is focused on these 10 steps that we went through now um, and it kind, kind of um, it's based on, on, on the other trainings so it's mm. like an, 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 an ad yeah um, and I have people asking me if I can come and give trainings just in, in this in the in trauma sensitivity mm. mindfulness and I do yes. that to places or facilities who has been working with equine assisted interventions for a very long time. They already mm. have some kind of knowledge and skills. Um, yeah. But if you haven't, I recommend to start with the equine therapy and learning programs trainings. And they are, as you said, online now. You can we have them in person as well, but you can also do them online. Mm. Yes, because I saw that you also and perhaps they're able to offer like private training yeah um, exactly so mm. um again we, tr we try to adapt to whatever where people mm. are and what they need and everybody has different backgrounds and different knowledge and, and, and all that uh, yeah, so, so we can come and give trainings if there is enough people in a group mm. that makes it possible for us with travel and stuff yes of course yeah but uh, can i just ask um so you say um, enough experience of equine assisted um, interventions before. Yeah. So if uh, should I, you know, would that be courses and certifications or can I um, have a practical experience um, but no <laughs> official um, training or is, is it just for people who are um, perhaps certified or have gone through other systems before? Um, it, it it depends on what you mean. If you're if you're if you want mm. to become a trainer or a facilitator of this, um, yes, facilitators are similar. Yeah. Then then I am kind of I'm I'm joking with people. I'm not making myself popular by saying that, but I think you should take a lot of trainings. Yes. <laughs> and and it does it, it isn't so much about the certifications. 
but mm. we're learning more about equine behavior and equine welfare and, and all this and, and mm. also learning about how to do equine assisted interventions and how it functions like human equine interaction mm. yes because that's the part i don't you know i i worked with horses all my life and i've studied horse science at university and so on yeah. uh, and horse behavior but and i've also been a, a trainer for for people and horses all my life but um i have no training in equine assisted you know no formal training at all no. before and and you can take our trainings and there are other trainings out there as well um mm. i recommend ours because they're very science-based <laughs> but um there are other good ones of course um, but I do recommend you to take trainings because it's mm. it's a combination of, of helping people grow uh, mm. and at the same time taking care of the horses. Yes, it's actually course. a very powerful mix. So what's before knowing what you're doing is is yes is, is crucial mm. I think for, for the people coming to you. Yes, and for you, I guess. If, yeah, just for to you keep too, you safe. To keep yourself mm -hmm. safe, but yes, also. For everyone, for the horses, for you, uh, for your clients. Yes, of course, because we have exactly what you say with the, the big uh, farm and our horses live like Martha's horses. And that's the way we have our horses. And uh, I've been thinking about this for many years. And I've actually um, uh, been taking courses uh, in, um, in uh, the USA okay. online yeah. uh, with another. Yeah. So, uh, I'm just wondering what's the right or what's the path uh, through you that you would recommend if that, that's the uh, starting with the online training and then this. But you signed up for the online training, but you never took mm. it. No, I'm, I'm uh, waiting to email you about. Okay. <laughs> you. But, but, but do email me and, and, and I will add you and you can try it out and see what you think because you've already paid for it, I think. Yes, I did. Yes. yes exactly. Yeah. So please. And then, yeah, I will. Yeah. Yeah. Do that. Thank you. You're welcome. And and we are a little bit harsh with these things in Mimur, Murta, uh, <laughs> because uh, just because you have a couple of horses and you like you feel good with your horses, they are kind of your therapist as people say um it doesn't mean that you can just invite people and say hey if you have a lot of trauma you can come to me and i can help you because i feel better with my horses so i know how to do this um i think it's crucial with education um and especially when you have when you offer things to vulnerable people and part of it is as marta pointed out being self-aware what what are my triggers what is my ed where is my edges in this uh, so you you train yourself also to be very self-aware so you can support yourself and that you have supervision and things in place before you start the work. I think this one way, one thing is knowing horses and taking care of them, but it can be really surprising what happens when um, you know people come to your horses, people you don't know, and people can surprise you, people can surprise your horses. <laughs> and yeah, I feel it's good to be maybe not prepared because you cannot kind of anticipate this, but at least to know how you can take care of the situation, how you can take care of yourself, how you can take care of the horses and the clients. Yeah. So and, and also how you can you can create or get yourself a context where you can practice this. Yeah, and people you can talk to about it and just, yeah. yeah. So take part in discussions, join these kind of things and form the network and people you can practice with. Give each other feedback. I also want to introduce Ulla Karin, who sits here with us. She's also from Lima. <laughs> You need to say hi, Ulla Karin. Yes, hi, I'm Ulla Karin, uh, and uh, I'm going to um, work with these uh, workshops together with Katarina. 
and the first workshop, the uh, workshop for free in Sweden will be in my place. It's uh, a riding school and it's a special environment, but we have both um, horse uh, housing, you know, or in ordinary way, and we all have housing uh, horses outdoors, and we are going to work with the horse outdoors. So, I, I think we have room for three persons more. So you are welcome if you want to come to our workshop in Tibro, Sweden. So just let us know. You're so welcome. And then there is a second one in, in Skåne yeah. in June. Yeah. Ulla Karin will be on that one as well. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Thank you, Ulla Karin. Ulla Karin has been working with equine assisted interventions for like 15 years or something. <laughs> She's kind of a nestor in this. <laughs> Okay. Any other questions or reflections? I think the silence may mean that <laughs> the questions haven't been yet born. And no, and it can be that. And, and I think you have all found your way to the, the group trauma sensitive equine system mindfulness on Facebook and you can post questions there as well. Okay. Or contact us, of course. How oh, is the question? How is self-compassion practiced? <laughs> that's, that, that's a good question. Um, that is one way of practicing it is getting yourself reminders to be kind to yourself all the time, like how you talk to yourself, your language. Like if you do something you're not happy with, many people start scolding themselves like, oh, I'm so stupid or something like that. So paying attention to that because mindfulness is a lot about paying attention. So, okay, I did it again. Like, how can I practice saying nice things to myself? How can I practice um, when I'm stressed or late? How can I practice talking to myself in a way that is kind? It has to do with lots of training to be kind to yourself. Many, 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 many different ways of doing that. There is something more, Marta, in the chat? No? Uh, there is a thank you from Julian. Yeah. Says, it was a good introduction. Thank you. I do agree. It can be scary with the equine learning. I had qualified therapists who had clients, and it's amazing how the things from the horse can trigger strong reactions from those who have experienced trauma. Yes. Yes. And, and I said that before equine assisted learning or interventions is a very, very powerful tool. Being with horses open people up very fast. Mm -hmm. uh, and then if you add mindfulness, that is also a way into yourself. You need to help people pace that and titrate it so it, it doesn't go too fast. And um, Also, after sessions, you need to know how you can help them close up and finish what you've been working with. So you don't leave them hanging with something that's too hard for them to to bring home. And to digest on their yeah. own, yeah. And I also think that the environment we choose for the uh, interventions for the sessions is very well. It allows horses to free for, for free movement to take on their own decisions to to choose what they are doing actually, and uh, it sounds beautiful, but it can be triggering once the horse just leaves, yeah? Yeah. Goes in a different direction, doesn't come to you, doesn't keep close. And these are all situations which I know from my experience with my clients that they really open <laughs> different things. Yeah? They're, yeah. 
there's a learning curve there and learning edge into them, but yeah. And there is something. From how you mean, Evelyn, how you practice being self-compassion together with horses? With horses. Um, it's about practicing um, also the horses, as Marta say, can, for example, leave you and you feel rejected. Uh, and this is, again, everything we do with the horses in these kind of settings, it, it doesn't have to do with the horses. It has to do with you again. So even if the horse is doing something, it has to do with how you treat yourself in the situation. But they will come up with things to do so you get the possibility to practice this. And of course, you can also practice being kind to the horses. It's a step like um, finding out what the horse likes or needs in the situation is raising questions about what do you need and what do you like. So and of course, supported by it's supported by the facilitator, of course, because we also model the compassionate uh, approach by how we treat you, how we treat each other, how we treat the horses, how we treat ourselves, and yeah. it is. There are many parts to this. Yes. And many opportunities, I think. It's not only in the language, it's not only in your inner work, but there are different opportunities and different occasions to be compassionate, to experience compassion. And this way, there is some kind of little lamp inside. It's okay, maybe I can be also compassionate towards myself, yeah? Mm -hmm. By doing things, by experience. Yeah. It is. And as you said, Marta, you never know what's going to happen. You don't know what the horses are going to do. You don't know what people come with. So this practicing, uh, helping you uh, learn to think on your feet, being able to, to, to have ideas and solutions to many different situations that you don't know what's going to happen. Um, is why we also talk about this uh, as not learning a model that you follow like one, two, three, four, even if you have steps in this, it's still based on you being able to have a lot of tools in your toolbox so you can be with a lot of different situations and still not lose your own footing in it. I sometimes have this metaphor of surfing the wave yeah. that you learn some kind of balance, you learn certain things to do the surfing, but you never know, you know, yeah? how what will happen on the way you just yeah, practice surfing them so i sometimes think about the work with horses uh, just that it's similar to this yeah are you happy with the information you have gotten Okay, uh, so it's eight o'clock, and and you, as we said before, contact us or, or ask questions in in the group if you something pops up for you, and please join us on the workshops if you're interested or some other kind of training we offer uh, as a step. We're happy to support you with where you want to go with whatever you want to work with. So thank you for today. If thank you. you don't have anything more. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Take care. Thank you. Bye bye. bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Julia. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. It's good to see you, everyone. Bye bye.